Hello everyone, it's Leandra here from Paper Artsy and uh, today I've got a uh, Lynn Brown here with me who's going to show you a great technique that she figured out. Hi Lynn, how are you doing? Hi, I'm good, thanks. So we you figured this out at Version Scrap, Version didn't Scrap. you? Which was a show that we do together in April um, every year in Paris. And um, we were doing a lot with gel mediums at the time and grunge paste, of course, which we use a lot. And Lynn was experimenting to see how a golden gel medium, this extra heavy gloss, worked with Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays on top. And so this was one of the quite cool things that we, in, you know, we got a bit excited about, really, mm, didn't we? Yeah. So Lynn's taken it a step further, and she's also um, tried similar things with grunge paste. And so she's got four different samples here. So Lynn, I'll hand it over to you to explain what you're going to do and which products you're going to use. Okay, so the experiment started with um, a product by Golden, which is their extra heavy gel, but it's the gloss variety. Um, I'd never really used gloss before. I've always opted for matte versions of a product, um, but I was kind of intrigued to see how much it would react as a, a create a resist when you spray mica sprays over the top. Um, and this product, Lindy's Stamp Gang, was also new to me. So it was quite an expi exciting experiment, really, to be using like two new products all in the same experiment. Um, so at the same time, I decided to use grunge paste as well to make a comparison as how the Stamp Gang sprays would work over the top of both of them. And obviously, um, the grunge paste is quite a porous paste, um, so I anticipated that I was going to get two completely different looks and in fact that's exactly what I got. So um, what I've got in front of me here are the results of that experiment. Um, I have to say this is my favourite. This is the gloss with Lindy's Stamp Gang over the top on some smoothie cardstock and the results look like PowerShell. It's really amazing. It's like that mother of pearl look where um, the, the colors of the mica really sit well over the top, but it's not complete coverage. So you get little bits of the gloss showing through. It's such a cool and easy technique, but such fabulous results. Um, this one is also on smoothie cardstock with the grunge paste. Exactly the same color sprays, but you can see it's two totally different looks. On this one, I've used Paper Artsy's um, Crunchy Paper, which is a paper that has a wax coating. So I knew the sprays weren't going to um, soak into the paper like they did on this experiment. So you can see the sprays have really soaked into the card on both of them. And on this one, I knew that it was always going to sit on the top, but I just love how the little splatters have just dried, looking like little raindrops. But amazingly the color in the mica really shows up beautifully well mm. over the top of the gloss and i think the light the light mica sprays look fantastic on top of a dark one because you get then that abalone shell mm. looking style of, of effect don't you definitely so every color we've done it with we've just been like oh that's oh, amazing totally blown and away it's certainly on this one the fact that you've got that gloss gel is what really gives it the shine definitely. Um, underneath and I love the way the two colours of the mica sprays mingle together to make a third colour. Um, I've got a, I'll show you the colours in a second, but I've, I've got a blue and quite a neutral colour, but it's created some really beautiful shades of green, which yeah. I'm hoping the camera can pick up. And I think it's really bonkers how when you spray a spray, we're all used to the sprays sinking into the dippy bits, not actually mm. grabbing on the raised areas. Yeah. And it's crazy, it defies logic, how the sprays seem to grab on those raised areas. Um, and resi and are resisted in the in the dippy bits, but I guess that is the wax. It's in, the wax, in definitely, the paper. definitely. And then the same experiment again with um, the grunge paste um, on the on the waxed crunchy paper, and again same colours, but again two totally different looks because the mica and the liquid from the Lindy's Stamp Gang sprays soaks into the grunge. So I'm just going to pop these to one side and show you exactly what I did. So I've pre-prepared my experiment for you. So these ones are the grunge paste and these ones are the gloss gel. So if I just open this jar, 
you will see that this paste looks completely white when you use it. But when it's thoroughly dry, it will be completely clear. And very glossy. And very, very glossy. So what about the stencil you choose? Well, you can of course use any stencil, but for this particular technique, I found that this type of stencil, the doily variety, really produced the best kind of results. Um, I've tried it with other stencils that are a bit more open area, and so it gave me larger areas, but I didn't get such a pleasing result. So if you've got a stencil that's got fine areas like this, whether it's flowers or one of these doilies, that would work beautifully for so this that's, technique. Um, a crafters workshop stencil. This there's is quite a, a few in that. There thing. is. I think there's about three that look similar to this. Um, but there's also some that they do that are very fine flowers and they also work beautifully. So basically what you're aiming for is small areas of your paste, whether it's the gloss or the grunge paste. So here we go with um, the Lindy's Stamp Gang Sprays. Um, these were a new product to me in Paris, the show that we did. Um, basically they come as a bottle with just the mica sitting in the bottom. Um, this one is called Opal Sea Oats and this one is called Tibetan Poppy Teal. So what you do when you get one of these, you just fill the bottle to this fill line with warm water. You let it sit for 10 minutes, then give it a bit of a shake and the mica will mix into the liquid. Now, when you're buying these, it's quite cool really because they are pretty true to the colors of the labels. Sometimes when you buy one of these sprays, you're not really sure what color you're going to get. I mean, you can usually tell what color the mic is going to be, but you don't really know what the color of the, the dye is going to be. So I'm going to start by popping down some kitchen paper underneath my cardstock here, or help mop up some of the excess liquid because it will be quite a wet process, particularly over the top of the um, crunchy paper because it's not porous. So starting with the, the turquoise color, give it a nice shake. And we are just going to spray a little bit of this color on all four of my samples. Take your second colour, again, give it a bit of a shake. Get it thoroughly mixed. It's important that the mica is mixed well, otherwise you, you may run the risk of clogging the little tube that sits in the bottom of your spray bottles. I know um, historically these products can be problematic with the mica clogging up the spray mechanism. And one of the little tips that we found over the years is have a look at the length of the plastic tube. Sometimes they're just a little bit too long. And if you just take a little snip off the bottom of the tube, it kind of stops the clogging. So I'm just going to spray in the gaps and you can see how different the color looks on the crunchy compared to the smoothie cardstock. So I'm going to um, take my heat gun Give these a bit of a dry. The grunge paste ones are going to dry much faster than the gloss because obviously the spray cannot soak through the gloss um, product. But what it will do is soak down into the cardstock and on the crunchy paper, it's going to puddle up like this, but it will dry like that. Now I'm going to warn you, it's quite time consuming to dry this. And we will need to repeat this two or three times to create the effect that I showed you earlier on. So I'm just going to start by drying now. Okay, so my first layer of spray is now completely dry and I'm ready to go ahead and spray my second layer. So my aim really is not to spray completely in the same area with the same color. I'm kind of gonna offset it a little bit so that I get a little bit of layering going on with the different colors. So we're just going to spray some of the blue on each of those samples. And then I'm gonna come in with my second color. Don't forget to mix the mica before you spray. And then we'll repeat the whole drying process. I'm guessing I'm gonna need three layers to achieve the effect that I got in the samples that I showed you at the beginning.
but just look how the colors are mingling together and creating that third color just beautiful so I'm gonna go ahead and dry okay so layer number two is completely dry and I'm loving the way that these three are looking with just two layers. So I think I'm gonna stop there for those guys and just put a third layer on the front one at the front uh, down here, which is actually the gloss on the smoothie cardstock. So third layer coming up. Just to intensify the color, that final little stage. Oh, that's gorgeous. Loving that green. So final drying. Okay, so that's my third and final layer of sprays. They're all dry. I'm just going to try and lift these up so the camera can see the effect that you get. So just to remind you, this is the golden heavy, extra heavy gloss and with the mica sprayed over the top and it's just looking beautiful. I love all of this dotty effect that you get that just looks like raindrops that's dried on there. This is the other gloss on the cardstock and we've kind of figured out that it's looking white here because when the product dries, it dries completely clear. So you've actually got the white of the cardstock showing through. So that adds an extra feature to the whole effect. This one here was the grunge paste on the cardstock. So grunge paste is absorbent as well as the card. So everything is soaked right through. Actually, I wonder if it's soaked through to the other side. Yeah, you can see a little bit coming through there, but it's such a beautiful effect. It's more delicate on this. And last but not least on the crunchy paper, this is the grunge paste. So you can see four totally different looks but with the same products. So what could we do with these? You could use them on, you could use them in your journals, you could use them by tearing them up into smaller pieces, mount them on a canvas, you could make cards out of them, you could do absolutely anything with them. But we could also enhance some of them a little bit further. And one of the products that I really love is Treasure Gold. Um, and Treasure Gold comes in all sorts of colours. I've actually got a classic gold here. This is my all-time favourite one. It just works with everything. And I'm just going to pop a little bit on top of the grunge paste sample that I did earlier because I know that that one is thoroughly dry. So I'm just going to move these to one side while I bring back that sample, which was this one here. And because of the colours of um, the Lindy Stamp Gang are kind of muted, I just wanted something to highlight the areas around the edges of some of this design in circles here. And I reckon that the, the classic would be a really good contrast against those colours. So you can either use your finger to just pick up a little bit and rub in, but I'm just going to apply it with a brush so that I have a little bit more control about where the color goes. And I like to use a brush like this. It's quite stiff and I'll keep the brush flat and just rub it over the high points. And I think you can see that it's just going to enhance that a little bit. So would you um, choose a treasure gold that contrasts Definitely. With, yeah. I wouldn't choose, for example, there's a beautiful color treasure gold called aquamarine, which, you know, logic would tell you that it's going to work lovely with these colors but unless you put it just over this color it's not going to show up over this color by using a contrasting color i could actually use the same color over everything but equally well you know i could pick up something like onyxite which is a dark chocolatey brown that would work over the top here as well so uh where you've got a light color this it really does highlight the texture of when you um applied your um where you applied your grunge paste. Mm. So on this little section here, there's some real lumpy bits where obviously the spatula left yep. a bit of texture and the treasure gold's really gonna pick that up, isn't it? It certainly is, it certainly is. And also the treasure gold will show more on the darker areas of color. So I think you can see just around the edge of that blue there, yeah. it does show up slightly darker than on top of the more delicate color here. Yeah. 
I just love treasure gold. I like anything with mica in. It's just so beautiful, so elegant. Mm. And of course, one of the features about the Lindy Stamp Gang sprays is that they, once they're dry, they're permanent. None yeah. of the mica comes off in your hand. And it's the same with treasure gold. As soon as you um, use this product um, it, and it, 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 the solvent evaporates, it's all good because it's all permanent on the on the final surface, which is a really handy thing. It's I think so, sometimes yes. you can end up with um, micas coming off on you or... Um, um, you know, some gilding waxes are not permanent, but this one is. So f for me, that's just, I find it really useful that, um, that you don't get all that residue. Yeah, definitely, definitely. You can just rub it and you can see that, you know, you just, uh, there's a little bit of treasure gold here, but you don't get any of the mica coming off. Yeah. Um, the treasure gold will rub off for a little bit, but if I polish that with a soft cloth, that would be even shinier and then nothing would come off yep. on my fingers at yep. all. And you can easily use a heat gun as well, can't oh, you? Oh, yes, yes, you can. Yep. So I hope that that's inspired you to um, test drive some products like this. Um, it's always a really exciting thing to do, um, to just sit down and experiment with a product and find out what it, what it can do. You never know, you might discover a new technique for yourself. Thanks, Lynn. Thanks for joining us today. And uh, we hope to have Lynn back in, in the future again. And we'll see you back here on the Paper Artsy YouTube channel.